another example is Ka'b ibn Zuhair. Ka'b ibn Zuhair was a poet, his brother was a poet, and his father was one of the greatest poets. He was one of the ones who had al-mu'allaqat. Uh, the Arabs used to honor the best pieces of poetry by hanging them on al kaaba This was uh, uh, to express the beauty of this piece of work. And the father of Ka'b, Zuhair ibn Abi Salma, was one of these who had his poems hanging on al kaaba his, his son Ka'b was a poet and also uh, Bujair was a poet. But Bujair was a Muslim and Ka'b was a non-Muslim and he used to make poetry against Rasulullah. So when the Muslims entered into Mecca, uh, Bujair wrote a letter to his, to his uh, brother and uh, he told him that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is uh, killing the men of Mecca who had poetry against him. So, uh, and, and they were not from Mecca. Uh, so he was, he was warning him. So Kaab wasn't in Mecca, he, but his brother sent him a letter for, beforehand warning him and told him that, listen, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is killing all of the people who spoke against him. And he told him that the ones who are left, like Abdullah bin Zab'ari and Hubayra bin Abi Wahb, they are trying to flee and run away. Because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has issued his orders to kill anybody who speaks against him. So this is another example of the greatness of this crime. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was merciful, who would forgive his enemies, but in this particular, with this particular crime, things were different. And then we have the story of Uqba bin Abi Mu'ayyad and another bil Harith. In the Battle of Badr, there were 70 prisoners of war from the disbelievers of Quraysh. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked that they be presented to him. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would look at them one by one. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was staring at another bil Harith. And Nadr bin Harith looked into the eyes of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and saw something. So he told the man next to him, he said, listen, I'm going to be killed. I can see death in the eyes of Rasulullah. The man told him, no, you're just exaggerating, you're too afraid, you're just terrified. He said, no, I'm telling you, I saw death in the eyes of Rasulullah. And then another bin Harith, he called Mus'ab bin Umair, who was his relative, and he told him, listen, go to Rasulullah and tell him to treat me like everybody else. Treat me like a man from my people. If he's going to kill them, then let him kill me. If he's going to forgive them, let him forgive me. Mus'ab bin Umair told him, you are the one who said what you have said about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you are the one who spoke against the book of Allah. Another bil Harith, he is the one who used to hold the halaqah next to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi to compete with him. He traveled to Persia to learn stories and then he came back and told the disbelievers, he told them, listen, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling you tales, I have some better tales to tell you, come and listen to me. He told him, please Mus'ab, speak to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, aren't you the one who used to torture his companions? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called another bil Harith and told Ali ibn Abi Talib to execute him. He was singled out. And then after that, when they reached another, uh, now they're traveling back, so they reached a particular area, he executed another bil Harith, and then when they traveled a little further, he summoned Uqba ibn Ami Mu'ayyad for execution. Uqba said, Ya wayli, ala ma uqtal ya Quraysh, min bain man hahuna. Woe unto me, why am I singled out for execution? All of the men here with me are your enemies. All of the men here with me have fought you. All of the men here with me are from Quraysh, my tribe. Why are you singling me out? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, لِعَدَاوَتِكَ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Because of your animosity towards Allah and His Messenger. قَالَا مُحَمَّدْ مَنُّكَ أَفْضَلْ فَجْعَلْنِي كَرَجُلٍ مِّنْ قَوْمِ إِنْ قَتَلْتَهُمْ قَتَلْتَنِي وَإِنْ مَنَنْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ مَنَنْتَ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنْ أَخَدْتَ مِنْهُمْ الْفِدَاءِ كُنْتُكَ أَحَدِهِمْ he said, Oh Muhammad, treat me as one of my people. If you execute them, execute me. If you free them, free me. If you take compensation for their freedom, then take what you want from me. 
And then he said, Oh Muhammad, who will take care of my children? Rasulullah Sallallahu said, Al-Nar, Hellfire. قدمه يا عاصم فضرب عنقه فقدمه عاصم فضرب عنقه take him our عاصم and cut off his head and then Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said بئس الرجل كنت والله ما علمت كافرا بالله وبكتابه وبرسوله مؤذيا لنبيه فأحمد الله الذي هو قتلك وأقر عيني منك what an evil man you were I don't know of a man who was a disbeliever in Allah and his book and his messenger like you and you harmed the Prophet of Allah so I praise Allah the one who killed you and the one who has pleased my eyes by seeing you die Rasulullah treated these people differently and it's very clear and Ibn Abbas عنه, he said there was a blind man and he had Umm Walad Umm Walad is, is a, a, a bonded woman uh, whom her master has children with so then she is called Umm Walad the, there are special rules that apply to her so he had this Umm Walad and he had two children from her but she used to curse Rasulullah and he would uh, uh, warn her to stop but she wouldn't stop one night she was carrying on with cursing Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so he took a dagger and he put it in her stomach and he pressed it in and he killed her in the morning the news reached to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so Rasulullah gathered the people and said أُنْشِدُ اللَّهَ رَجُلًا فَعَلَ مَا فَعَلَ لِي عَلَيْهِ حَقْ إِلَّا قَام I ask you in the name of Allah whoever did that to stand up so the blind man stood up and he came walking towards Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam حَتَّى قَعَدَ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ Until he sat next to, in front of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So he said, Ya Rasulullah, أَنَا صَاحِبُهَا O Messenger of Allah, I am the one who did that. She used to curse you. And I would tell her to stop and she wouldn't stop. And I have from her two children like pearls. وَكَانَتْ بِي رَفِيقَةً And she was very kind with me. But last night, she started cursing you. So I took a dagger and I stuck it in her and killed her. Rasulullah Wasallam said, أَلَا فَاشْهَدُوا أَنَّ دَمَا هَدَرْ Bear witness that, his blood, that her blood is invalidated. Meaning there is no compensation for her and there is no punishment for the one who killed her. And I want you to think about the words of this man. He has from her children and he described them as pearls. And he said, he said, وَكَانَتْ بِي رَفِيقَةً She was very kind with me. And this is a blind man who needed the help of such a kind woman who was very nice with him. But because we should love Rasulullah more than we love ourselves. And we should love Rasulullah more than we love our families. And we should love him more than anything in this world. This is why I did what I did. It was for your sake. And this is how every Muslim should be when it comes to the issue of Rasulullah And Rasulullah approved what he did and said, Ala fashhadu anna dama hadar.